Hello everyone, welcome back again to Mathematics for Engineering 3. Uh, today is section 2.2, which is the uh, solving of systems of differential equations when the uh, eigenvalues are repeated, okay, or what we so called uh, repeated roots. Well, uh, let's start here. Uh, this is section 2.2, as I already mentioned. Uh, the method of solving, uh, you know, this case is quite similar to the previous one, okay? And first, we would solve the characteristic equation, right? And we would obtain the eigenvalues, right? We would get m1, m2, m3, m4. And this is the case where, you know, one of the m's, let's say m1, is repeated, uh, p times okay it might be repeated two times or three times or even you know more than that but let's say it's repeated three uh, p times and when it is repeated p times we gonna have two different cases okay you know this is the second case where the roots are repeated okay and when the roots are repeated or the eigenvalues are repeated we have, you know, the other two cases within this case, okay? And the first case is when, you know, M1 gives P linearly independent eigenvalues, okay? And if it gives P linearly independent eigenvalues, K1, K2, to Kp, then we obtain the solution. The solution are the same as the previous chapter, uh, sorry, the previous section. So x1 is k1e to the m1t, x2 would be k2, but instead of m2, that would be m1t, okay? So these are all the same, uh, the same m, which is, uh, which are uh, m1, okay? So the first case is when for one m, for one m, m1, you can get, you know, k1, k2, k3 until kp okay when m1 is repeated p times okay you might be you know curious like how how would 1m gives like p case how would that be possible because in the previous uh video right we looked at the case when you know all m's are distinct and 1m gives only 1k right m1 gives k1 m2 gives k2 m3 gives k uh k3 but how can you know 1m gives like more than one case we're gonna see it in this case okay and the second case is when 1m only gives 1k and that went for it okay we're gonna talk about that later but Right now, we're going to be looking at the first case when 1m gives many k's, okay? So, let's look at the example. Here, find the general solution for these systems of linear equation. Guys, here, it's quite easy because it gives you the matrix form already. So, you don't need to convert it to the the you know the matrix form right so in the exam it depends they might give you the regular form so you need to convert that to the matrix form or it can give you the matrix form okay so it depends but you better be able to do both okay you should be able to do both and um, well so you i think you're already familiar with you know how to solve the the systems of linear uh DEs, right? So first, we need to look at the characteristic equation, which is the determinant of a minus m i uh, equals zero. And in this case, we would have two minus m zero zero two minus m equals zero. See, I'm, I'm trying to go a little quicker so that you know. In the exam, if I am doing slowly, in the exam, you might be doing that slowly as well, and you might not have enough time to finish all the questions, right? So I'm trying to do it a little, you know, a little more faster so that you are familiar with the, the speed so that in the, in the exam, you would, you know, be able to manage to do, uh, to get all the questions done in time. 
okay so here our computer determinant so here it down and up right down and up but when it's up you need to get the minus sign don't forget that okay that would be really unfortunate if you forget it so here is 2 minus m 2 minus m and then minus 0 equals 0 and that is really simple right so here it would be a minus uh here this 0 is you know it's just 0 so i don't care so i get that m equals 2 and 2 right i get m equals 2 and 2 why because you know these two terms the multiplication of those is zero it mean it means that each of them might be zero so if 2 minus m is zero it means that m is 2 if 2 minus m is zero m is 2 right that is a uh, secondary school mathematics right but if you have any problems you know don't be ashamed you know don't, don't be shy just just come and talk to me i am happy to help okay so right now we have m which is one uh, which is two and is repeated twice right this m let's say m1 is two and is repeated two times right right and then i need to find the corresponding eigenvectors case right right and let's see if this m1 can give you two case okay and see how okay okay so uh to find the k to find k we need to look at this equation there's just a baby out there okay just try to concentrate okay i am in the office so a uh minus uh, i'm not sure if you can hear the the baby crying crying but it's just outside the room okay maybe you can't okay here is a minus uh m i k equals zero okay and let's say you want to find uh, the first k let's say you want to find the first k which is k1 and that is k1 k2 okay okay so in that case we would have what is it a is two zero zero two right this is the matrix a isn't it this is the the matrix a so a minus m that would be uh two minus two zero zero two minus two and then you get k1 k2 equals zero in that case we have that uh zero 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 k1 k2 equals uh zero okay so zero here is the is the the matrix okay so it must be zero zero like that and what is happening what's happening you get you get zero equals zero and zero equals zero right right okay if you know for those who who who, who can't follow here is zero k1 plus zero k2 equals zero which means that zero is zero what does that mean it means that k1 and k2 can be anything k1 and k2 can be anything right k1 and k2 can be anything right because you know if k1 is 5 k2 is 3 5 times 0 plus 0 times 3 that's still zero right it means that k1 and k2 can be any numbers but k1 and k2 can't be zero at the same time okay because we don't want the vector k to be zero vector right okay okay and then what's next what's next we know that we know that k is k1 and k2 okay and you can't really write k1 uh, sorry k2 in terms of k1 right it's unlike the previous section that you can write k2 in terms of k1 
right? In the previous station, you might have k2 equals to k1, and then this become k1 and 2 k1, and then you substitute k1 with 1, right? And then you get 1, 2, okay? But this is so different, it's so different. You can't, you can't, you cannot write c2 in terms of k1. So what should you do? What you should do is to split, to split this vector k, okay, with k1 and k2. So here, if you split it, you would have k1 0 plus 0 k2. Okay, okay, that would be your k1. Okay, so you have k1 0. 0, k2. And when you take that sum, you get the big vector k back. Okay, and that's what you should do. You know, whenever you can't write k2 in terms of k1 like we did before, okay, and this is usually the case when you have, yet when you have repeated roots, okay, repeated eigenvalues. So when you can't write it in can't write it in, in terms of 1k. You split that into two vectors, okay, k1 and k2, okay? So once you split that into two vectors, you can call this k, let's, let me call it k1 again. So how about, how about here, we just call this vector k, not k1 and k2. Okay, so once once you know that here m r repeated, okay, when r m r repeated, you just call it k. You don't need to call it k one. Just call it k, because you know that it might give you many k's afterwards. Okay, okay. So I'll call that k k one, and I'll call this k k2 okay so k1 is k1 and 0 and i can do the same thing by substitute k1 with with 1 and that is 1 0 and similarly similarly k2 would be what is it k2 would be uh 0 and k2 and then I substitute k2 with 1, so I get 0 and 1. Okay. Okay. So, you have your first solution, which is uh, 1, 0, e to the m, m is 2t. And your second solution, which is uh, 0, 1, e to the 2t. Then, your general solution is... What is it? C1, 1, 0, e to the 2t, plus C2, 0, 1, e to the 2t, and that's it. See? It's very, very simple. Right? Right? Okay. Let me wrap it up here. First, when you see the question, you you know, you take the characteristic equation, which is this one, the determinant of a minus m i equals zero. After that, you solve for m, you solve for m. And here you have that m is repeated, right? It repeated twice or two times. After that, you get one k, which is the k equals k one k two. After that, you solve for the k. And here you obtain this equation. But it's unlike in the previous section when you can write this k1, uh, sorry, this k2 in terms of k1, and then you substitute k1 with 1, right? It's not the same. Guys, if you don't remember, go back to the previous video, right? Here is where the difference takes place, right? Here is where it's different from the previous section. You can't write k1 uh, k2 in terms of k1 unlike the previous section okay so when you when you can't do that you need to write this k split it split this k okay let me write it down here you need to split it 
in terms of K1 and K2. Okay, okay. When you split it in terms of K1 and K2, then you, you know, you call one of them the big K1. You call this one the big K1. And you call this one the big K2. Okay. And here is when we say, is when, when we say 1M give you many Ks because, you know, you have one K and you can split that K into many other Ks. Okay. The combination of some other Ks like this. Okay. And then when you have uh, K1 and and K2, you just substitute this little, little, little case here with one. Okay. And then you obtain X1, which is K1 E to the M1 T and X2, which is K2 E to the M1 T, right? It's, they are the same M. Don't forget guys, we have only one M here right now. Okay. And the solution, the general solution X is just the linear combination of those, right? Which is C1. 1, 0, e to the 2t plus c2, 0, 1, e to the 2t. And that's it. It's quite simple, isn't it? Right? This is the first case where 1m gives many k's. Okay? And here is the first example. Okay, I'll take you to the second example. Okay, so let's look at the next example. Another example when we have three in the uh, dependent variables okay you can see that from the matrix a right the matrix a here the dimension is uh is three times three okay which means that we have three variables right three dependent variables let's say x y z or x1 x2 x3 it's up to you okay it depends what you want to call it uh well so to solve this uh systems of linear equations first we need to find the eigenvalues m right so so to do that we would look at the characteristic equation and that is determinant of a minus mi equals zero zero minus m guys i'm going to do it a little quicker okay zero minus m that would be minus m three and one you need to subtract zero to the di diagonal line right so here is one two minus m and then one and one three minus m and that is zero okay you multiply down you get positive you multiply up you get negative right guys i taught you guys before in the on-site class if you want you can do the determinant this way Okay, you don't need to copy the first two columns and paste it here. You don't need to do that. And when you multiply up, you do it that way. Okay, so I'll do that. Okay, I'll do that. Or should I? Well, I'll just copy and paste the first two columns, just in case some of you don't understand what I'm talking about. Okay, but I'll talk about this method again in the on site class. Okay, we can do that a lot quicker. So here it would be. I'll copy and paste the first two column and that is zero. So when you multiply down, you get, what is it? Uh, M squared two minus M, right? This minus M and minus M, it turns to be M squared and you get two minus M here. And the next one is plus three and then plus three and that would be minus two minus m you multiply up right you get two minus m and then you have the minus sign here okay and the next one would be uh plus three m you get minus three m but you have the other minus so you get plus three m and plus three m again equals zero so here uh that would be uh two m squared uh, minus how about how about I do this first m squared 2 minus m and then here minus 2 minus m and it will be plus 6m plus 6 right equals 0 and that is uh, 2m squared minus 
uh, m cubed minus 2 plus m plus 6m plus 6 equals 0 and that is 2m squared minus m cubed and that plus 7m and plus 4 equals 0 okay and then I multiply the whole equation with minus 1 so I get m cubed minus 2m squared uh, minus 7m minus 4 equals 0 okay well after this you need to uh, factorize this uh, polynomial right and you know the one of the way one of the ways to do it is to use a uh, synthetic division guys if you don't know how to do synthetic 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 division you just go back to the 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 videos in chapter 2 I already explained how to do the the synthetic division in that uh, video okay so I'm not gonna talk about that again I'm just gonna use it okay so here it will be 1 minus 2 minus 7 and minus 4 and then you need to guess the number you know if you don't know what to guess just guess 1 so here that will be 1 right this times this this is 1 and then you you sum minus 1 and 2 you get minus 1 and then you get minus 1 again you get minus 8 right and then you get minus 8 and then you get minus 12 that doesn't work to make it work here it needs to be 0 okay so so that doesn't work so if 1 doesn't work how about minus 1 so you pull 1 up down here so you get minus 1 you get minus 3 then you get 3 you get minus 4 and then you get 4 and that is 0 okay and that means here this polynomial can be written as m if here is minus 1 m minus this number right right if this number is c the factor would be m minus c so m minus minus 1 that would be m plus 1 and here m squared minus 3m minus 4 equals 0 so you get m plus 1 and here m m uh, 3 and 1 minus n no it will be 4 and 1 uh, minus n plus that means that means uh, your m is minus 1 minus 1 and 4 okay okay so I'll call m1 equals minus 1 and m2 equals 4 okay okay then what's next we first need to take uh, sorry uh, m1 is minus 1 but is repeated twice is repeated twice right so I'm gonna take m1 equals minus 1 and then I'll solve for for k which is k1 k2 okay okay and how to do so how to do so uh, to do so I need to solve the equation a minus m1i k equals 0 right right and that would be what is it k uh, a minus m so it would be a minus minus 1 right so that would be 1 3 1 1 uh, 3 1 and 1 3 1 and then you get k1 k2 k3 equals 0 0 and 0 guys I'm so sorry right now the dimension is 3 times 3 so your k is not k1 and k2 you need to have k1 k2 and k3 because it's a uh, three dimension right we have uh, three independent variables okay and this metric it, this matrix is nothing but just a minus here it's just a minus uh, mi 
right? A minus M I. But don't forget, right now our M is minus one, so it's A plus I, right? So it means that you need to plus one to the diagonal line. Okay, that's why you get one here, three here, and one here like that. Okay, so in that case, okay, let me get you a new page. In that case, you would have that k1 plus 3k2 plus k3 equals 0. And you have the same, this same equation three times. Right? Right? So again, again, you can't, you can't write, you cannot write k2 and k3 in terms of k1 right right in that case in that case i'll just you know just do as uh, best as possible okay so here the k is k1 k2 and k3 Okay, you can't write all K2 and K3 in terms of K1. So the best thing you can do is to, you know, at least just get rid of one of the Ks. You just need to get rid of one of the K using this equation. Okay, you can get rid of K2, you can get rid of K3, or you can get rid of K1. In this case, I'll just get rid of K1. So from here, I know that k1 is minus k2 minus k3. So this guy would be minus uh, 3k2 minus k3 and k2 and k3. Guys, you don't need to do the same as what I am doing. You can, you know, instead of writing this, you can get rid of k2 uh, by, you know, or you can get rid of k3 by write k3 as minus k1 minus 3k2 and then this k would be k1 k2 and minus k1 minus 3k2 okay you just need to get rid of you know one of the case right right because you have only one equation you have three variables okay so the best you can do is to get rid of one of the case that is the best you can do okay guys let me you know let me talk about this a little further it's the the secondary school uh, problem if you have three equation three variables you can solve for the three variables right let's say if you have x y z and you have three equations you can solve for x for y and for z if you have three equations and you have two sorry if you have two equations but you have three variables let's say you have you know x y and z but you have only two equations in that case you can get rid of one variable right and oh sorry you can get rid of uh two variables right and if you have uh three variables x y z and you have only one uh, one equation you can get rid of only one variable like this okay okay so just to sum it up here just to sum it up here you have only one equation right but you have k1 k2 k3 the best you can do is to get rid of one of them so write one of them down in terms of the others in this case i write k1 down in terms of k2 and k3 and then after that we split we split the k we split the k so i can split it as uh minus 3k2 k2 and 0 plus minus k3 0 and k3 see i can split that into two vectors the one with k2 and the other one with k3 it's similar to when we do the previous question right after that after that again 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 
I call this guy K1. Okay, I call this guy K1. So I get minus 2 K2, uh, K2 and 0. Okay, and then I call this guy K2. So I get K2 equals minus K3, 0 and K3. And then I substitute, I substitute K, K1 and K2, uh, K, the little K here, little K1, a, a little K2, a little K3 with 1. So I have minus 2, 1 and 0. And here, similarly, I have minus 1, 0 and 1. Okay. Okay. In that case, I would have that x1 is uh, minus 2, 1, and 0. e to the m is minus t, right? And x2 is uh, minus 1, 0, and 1, e to the minus t as well. Okay. Okay. Oops, guys, sorry. Here, the number is 3. Okay, so it's here is minus 3, not minus, three, minus 2. Sorry, my bad. Here it needs to be minus 3. Okay, here, minus 3 and minus 3. So, you obtain uh, x1 and x2. Okay, so next, next, you need to work with m2. Okay, this is m1. Right? And for M1, you obtain two uh, eigenvectors, K1 and K2. Then you obtain two solutions already. Next, we need to look at... Okay, let me go to the new page. Let Next, we need to look at the case when M2 equals 4. Okay? And in that case, you would have... Uh, what is it? A minus M2i k2 right right okay guys because because this is m1 right and m1 already gives you k1 and k2 right so how about i call this one m1 and i call this one m3 instead of m2 does it make more sense right i think it's, it sounds better than m2 because for m1 you already get k1 and k2 okay Okay, okay, so let's call it M3. So now we look at M3, which is 4. So from the equation A minus M3i K3 equals 0. So we have that uh, the vector A is this one, right? This is a vector A, right? This is vector A. So we need to subtract here with minus 4 minus 4 and minus 4 right right so our equation would be uh minus 4 3 1 and 1 2 minus 4 that would be minus 2 and then 1 and 1 3 minus 4 and then you have k1 k2 and k3 equals 0 0 and 0 okay Guys, don't forget, this is our A. This is our A. Okay, this is our A. So, do I need to write A down here so that you can observe it a little better? So here, A is one, uh, 0, 3, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 0. Okay, so if you subtract this by 4, subtract this by 4, subtract this by 4, here is what you get. Okay, in that case, you would have that minus 4k1 plus 3k2 uh, plus k3 equals 0. And then you get k1 minus 2k2 uh, plus k3 is 0. And then you get k1 plus 3k2 uh, minus k3 is 0. Okay, you obtain these uh, three 
equations, right? Guys, don't forget this M, this M. It is not, not repeated, okay? It's not repeated. So it's back to the case when the root is distinct, okay? Okay, so this M3, we're gonna get K3. So you need to write K2 and K3 in terms of K1, right? Remember, that's in the previous video, right? That we need to write K2 and K3 in terms of K1, okay? So we need to write K2 and K3 in terms of K1. And how to do that? If I call this the first equation, the second equation, and the third equation, and then I take the first equation subtracted by the second equation, I would have minus 5K1 and then uh, my, uh, plus 5K2 plus 0 equals 0. So I have that K2 is uh, 5K2 is 5K1, which means that K2 is the same as K1. See, I can write K2 in terms of K1. See, and next, if I look at uh, equation 2 and 3, no, equation 1 and 3, okay, and then I take equation 1 subtracted by equation 3, what I have would be minus 5K1 and then plus 0 because, you know, this guy and this guy disappeared, right? And then I get K3 minus minus 4K3. That I would get five, plus 5K3 five equals 0. So again, I get 5K3 five equals 5K1, which means that K3 is the same as K1. So I know that my vector K K3, which is K1, K2, and K3, can be written as K1, and K2 is K1 as well, and K3 is K1 as well. And then I substitute K1 with 1, right? So I get 1, 1, 1. Okay, okay. So I have that X3 would be 1, 1, 1, e to the 4, t. Okay, okay, so the whole solution x would be c1 and x1 is uh, minus 3, 1, 0, minus 3, 1, 0, e to the minus t, and then c2 plus c2 and uh, x2 would be minus 1, 0, 1. Minus 1, 0, 1, e to the minus t. And then plus 1, 1, 1, e to the 4, t. And that's it. Okay. Okay, oops, I forget three, C3. Three. Okay. Okay. So, guys, let me uh, sum it up here. This is a long question. First, we look at the question, right? We get the uh, three dependent variables. Okay, let's say x, y, z. So first, we use the characteristic equation here to find m's, right? And we know that m is minus 1, minus 1, and 4. Okay, so I call m1 minus 1. And then I should have m2, right? But I just ignore m2. Why? Because m2 is minus 1 as well. You know, if you want, you can write it that M2 is minus 1 as well. Okay, so you get M1 is minus 1, M2 is minus 1, and M3 is 4. Okay, after that, you look at the case where M is minus 1, and it's the case where it's repeated twice. Okay, and then you look at the K. You look at the K. You know, you don't give 1, 2, 3 yet, because, you know, it's going to be split it afterwards, right? So you look at the, the equation A minus Mi, right? A minus Mi. So basically, you take the vector A here, uh, sorry, the matrix A here, and you minus M, minus M, minus M to the diagonal line. 
but don't forget m is minus one. So if you minus m, it means that you plus one, plus one, plus one. And that's why you get one, three, one, one, three, one, and one, three, one. Okay, and you write this in the regular form. You obtain only one equation, which is k1 plus 3, k2 plus k3 equals 0. Okay, and in that case, uh, you know, you can't write k2 and k3 in terms of k1, right? You can't do that, right? So, uh, what you can do is, you know, at least, you know, the best thing you can do is to just get rid of one of the k's. So in this case, I'll just get rid of k1, okay? So if I want to get rid of k1, I write this k1 in terms of k2 and k3 like that, okay? And then I substitute it here, uh, there in the k1. And then I have vector k in terms of k1 and k2. After that, I split it. I split it in k2s and k3. Okay, okay. If you have k2, you put it here. If you have k3, you put it here. Okay, split this vector into two vectors. And then I call this vector the big K1 and this the big K2. After that, I substitute K, K2 and K3 with 1. And that's what we already familiar with, right? So we get this K1 and K2. So we obtain the first and the second solutions. Okay, next we look at M3, which is 4, and it's not repeated. So it's back to section 2.1, which is the case where we have distinct root. Okay, so we begin with this equation again. We obtain this system of, you know, equation in terms of case. And then if it's distinct root, we should be able to write K2 and K3 in terms of K1. Okay, and this is how we do it. Right, we eliminate uh, K two and K. Uh, we eliminate uh, K two and K three. Right, so we get uh, K two and K three in terms of K one. Okay, so we can write K one, K two, K three as K one, K one, K one, because K two is K one and K three is K one as well. Then we substitute K one with one, so we obtain this K three. So this is the third solution, and X is just c1 x1 right plus c2 x2 plus c3 x3 and this is what it is okay and that's it guys good well that's it for this video is the 2.2.1 okay section is the case where we have a uh, repeated roots but 1m can give you multiple case okay in the next video we are still in this case when we have repeated roots but 1m it can't give you multiple case 1m can give you only one k so what should you do right because if you have k repeated p times you should get p solutions right Right? If M is repeated P times, you should get P solutions. But how about if, you know, for one M it gives you only one K, what should you do? Okay, and we'll talk about that in the next video. Okay, guys, bye-bye. See you in the next video.